Now it's my pleasure to be joined by Taquan Graham. TQ, how are you doing today, man? Man, I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm good. You know, we were just talking before we jumped into it that you're doing well, your family's doing well. And I say that because you guys are from Texas. Obviously, there's been that uh, you know terrible ice and wintry weather that rolled through there. So, um, man, what's it like trying to get into the swing of things when uh, Mother Nature's throwing you left hooks? Man, actually, uh, uh, while all this was happening, I actually was in California training still. I just got back uh, Sunday night. And uh, just talking to my mom and my brother, and uh, they they got through they got through it pretty well. Uh, you know, minimal stuff happened to them uh, out 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 with power for you know a few hours or so. But other than that, you know, they were all good. Good. Obviously, I, I'm glad to hear it. And as much as that's kind of like a, a low note for what's happening, a high note on the other end of the spectrum is you getting the NFL Combine invite. So. Congratulations for that. Uh, under normal circumstances, that's a huge deal. But now it's like, uh, congratulations, you get to jump on another Zoom call. So what's, what, yeah. what uh, do you know what they're going to do for you this year? Um, honestly, just like you said, I think we got, you know, some Zoom calls coming our way. But as well, we've been going through the whole medical process as best as we can. Um, you know, them scheduling uh, appointments and uh, wherever we're training. Uh, getting that in, EKG tests, blood tests, you know, the whole nine when it comes to that. Uh, but other than the medical and the interviewing process, I think that's about it. Uh, all the physical stuff has to be shown on our pro day. Sure. So, and that's obviously where I wanted to take it next, right? If the combine's really out of the question in terms of physically showing what you have, how much is it, you know, do you feel pressured that you have to really show up on the, the pro day and really put it all on the table? It's the actual last hurrah now instead of having, you know, the, the combine for a little bit and then, you know, balance out with the pro day. Um, yeah, uh, it definitely some pressure. Uh, there's a little pressure there uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, that's the last time, you know, scouts are, you know, physically going to see you, you know, moving around and testing and doing all that. But, you know, at the same time, uh, we're, you know, we're athletes and that's what we do. We, we go out there and we're, we perform on a certain day, uh, expecting it to be the best. So there's a little pressure there, but I'm expecting to go out there, you know, perform well and then show uh, what I got. Now, I ask about the pressure because, you know, I know if I were, were in your shoes, I'd be looking at the mock drafts. I'd be seeing what all these people say about me and, you know, that would feed into me being like, okay, on my pro day, I'm going to have to show X, Y, and Z to address these weaknesses. So do you spend any time reading through what anyone says about you or, or see any sort of projections for what they think? Man, honestly, uh, ever since college, I, I really don't look at that stuff. It's, um, it's very, e it's very easy to get, you know, stuck, you know, stuck looking at that stuff, uh, stuck worrying about what people think about you and, like you want to be honest, they're, they're just opinions. You know, you no one really knows anything. Uh, we don't know anything. Uh, your agents really don't know exactly where you're gonna go, what team you're gonna go to. So yeah, I don't spend that much time looking at the mock drafts. I I talk to my agent and uh, and his team and uh, see what teams say about me, what they think about me, and uh, I address it from there. And I'll go out there on pro day and uh, do what I do and then address the certain things that people have question marks on me, but um, I can't, I can't get too much into that media hype. Uh, that's just not me. I don't look at any of that stuff. Yeah, and shout out to Rachel and the priority team, because as you're marketing people, you know, let them handle the, the media hype and build it for you. Yeah, for sure. Now, big shout out to Rachel. Uh, she's uh she's the best. She, she definitely gets things done. For sure. Uh, you, you know, I wanted to take it back just to, right before the, the focus of the combine and the pro day, you, you wrapped up the senior bowl and, you know, from what I could see, you did very well there. So I wanted to ask just a little bit about what your experience was like and how did you prepare for that? Well, did you talk to certain guys or did you just kind of take it day by day? Um, uh, somebody I kind of uh, talked to a little bit about it was, uh, Charles, uh, many who plays for the Houston Texans, uh, so I just talked to him a little bit about it, uh, how it was going to go. I uh, talked to my old strength coach, Yancey McKnight, about it as well. How for what to expect. But um, 
it was a lot of unknowns going into the game. Uh, you kind of didn't know who was going to get invited late. You didn't really know who was all going to be there, how the setup was. But it definitely stressful. It was a stressful thing as well as being an exciting thing as well. Uh, just, you know, getting to compete against, you know, guys from all these different teams before I never got to play against. You know, also never got to meet the, all these uh, different players as well. You know, picking their brains about, you know, conference to conference, uh, different teams, different players. Uh, it just was a wonderful, you know, experience. And speaking about different conferences, you know, what's it like, you know, for you to get a sack in that game? Meanwhile, the, the Big 12 always has the knock that no one plays defense. I, I mean, thank you for, for showing up on behalf of the Big 12 to show that, yes, there are good defensive players in the conference. No, nah, I just feel like it's very overlooked. Uh, I feel like our conference is, man, it's very high powered when it comes to offensive, you know, offensive teams. It's just, man, we got some teams snapping the ball every six or seven seconds. And we got, we got all these, I think some, some things people overlook. We have Patrick Mahomes, you know, come out, come out of the big 12 conference, like Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, you know, Jalen Hurts. He came to our conference, like, you know, explosive, offensive players and all these teams and it's definitely hard to defend against them it's definitely not an easy task but we definitely can play it's something it's something that we we're probably arguing every day you know in the at the senior bowl in the locker room every practice talking about who can play defense who can't play defense and uh you know just like i said uh, everyone has their opinion but, you know, I played in that conference. I know how hard it is to defend against those explosive offenses. And it's um, it's pretty difficult. But, you know, we definitely got some good defensive players there. For sure. Oh, oh without question. You know, I, I wanted to, you know, talk about the, the Texas team for a second, though, before uh, we get a little bit more into, you know, what you've done to get here. And, you know, from the jump, I, what made your life e – I shouldn't say easier – what made you a better football player going against the, you know, a, a Sam Cosme in practice or having a, a Joseph Asai playing next to you? Is it better to have that iron sharpens iron and practice against, you know, a, a fellow senior bowl guy that's going to go to the NFL uh, in Sam, or is it having a, you know, dynamic defensive player next to you that can take some of the attention away from you? Um, it's definitely uh I feel like it's, it's a little bit a mix of both, uh, playing against, uh, you know, Sam Cosme, Sam Ellinger, uh, having a talented offensive players to go against, you know, uh, every scrimmage in fall camp, uh, every uh, practice at the end of practice, you know, two minute drill going against those guys. But as well as seeing, you know, uh, Joseph, uh, his, the type of motor he has, you know, when you might be feeling a little down or a little sluggish, you see him going hard second of the play and you kind of just like it kind of it's, it's infectious it's like that's what you want to do that's what you definitely uh you know you you always want to have a high motor and when you're playing next to a guy like that it just elevates your game as well and it's just uh having that mix of both definitely made me a better player and made me push myself harder for for sure i can't get you to take the bait to pick one all right, all right. Uh, I'll, I'll stop putting you in a hard spot um, but I, now I want to ask a little bit about coach Herman and, you know, I, I would say it's unfortunate that his tenure there is over. Um, I, I don't know what your feelings are on it, but <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Um, when you think about, you know, th those four years that he's had there, all of which you were there for, what do you think went right and worked well? And what do you think, you know, in your estimation is the reason why it didn't work all the way to the point where he's still there. So I'm not asking you to cast any shade on anyone or anything, but just if you can think through those four years, like what, what do you think was missing and what do you think was going well? Well, uh, I'd say, first of all, I do got pretty strong feelings about, you know, uh, his tenure being cut short at Texas is definitely something that's um, uh, definitely something that uh, I was very disappointed in, you know, happening uh, something that would, like we were hearing about it, but you know, there's a certain announcement made that he was going to stay. Uh, then he didn't stay, and it's just uh, it was all confusing. And 
it definitely, uh, I would say, hurt the seniors. It's uh, We kind of felt like we, you know, we played a part in that and that we didn't, you know, get the job done. We didn't win the Big 12 championship. Uh, just all these different things that we want to do before, you know, our tenure itself was over as well. But I feel like a lot of the things that went right was that we kind of changed, like, the landscape of the culture a little bit. We definitely left the place better than uh, how we came into it. Uh, I felt like we won a lot of games. Um, we went to four straight bowl games. Uh, we won all the bowl games. And we definitely did some good things there. Like I said before, I think we came up short, you know, not winning the Big 12. Uh, that's something we definitely wanted. And uh, what contributed that, you know, we, we weren't getting, like, blown out. We were losing by, you know, one possession. We were losing uh, by one possession. Uh, and we were losing pretty late, too. Uh, we would lose games, like, right at the end. Uh, it came literally came down by one possession. And that's the fr that was the most frustrating thing, I think, for – you know, all the players on the team, uh, knowing that we were that close, literally like arm's distance reach of, you know, winning all of our games, you know, uh, going to the Big 12 championship. And it's, it, I think that was just the most frustrating thing was I guess not being able to fully, you know, figure out how can we win these games? And because we're in every game that we play, but why can't we just win them? Why can't we finish them? And uh, I think that was the most frustrating part about, you know, my four years at Texas, not always being able to put it all together. Yeah. And trust me, as, as a fan, I can, uh, I watched a lot of it, you know, the, the Red River, River rivalry, man, that was, uh, I felt like I got my heart ripped out of it. And obviously I wasn't even playing, uh, <laughs> just watching from afar. But when you like, so for me at two and two, right, that has to be really when, uh, you got you guys kind of have to come together and say what are we going to do here and in fact I saw a press conference uh, before the the fifth game of the season uh, where, where you were speaking about the goal is still to win every single game and to win the conference but how how tough at two and two is it to maintain that focus and still have the hope that hey we can still do this well um, I just remember my sophomore year we we're kind of in the same boat uh, we were kind of like on the six five, six, seven game winning streak. And then we lost two games back to back. And everybody's kind of just looking at each other like what happened? Like, how are we going to steer this shit back in the right way? And you kind of just, you kind of just have to put your head down and go back to work. Um, here, I think I, I said this in a press conference, everybody has to like, we had a bye week after those, after we were two and two and we're like, you got to look in the mirror at yourself. You got to watch film. You got to watch, you got to watch the tape. What, what am I, what am I doing? What can I do better? Everyone has to do it. No matter how good you played or how bad you played, everyone has to take that look in the mirror and see what we can fix. Then we come together as a team, you know, during that bar, we practice, you know, right the ship and just try to get everything right, which, you know, it happened in 2018 and we ended up going to the big 12 championship uh, at the end of that year. And that's where I kind of, that's what we as leaders kind of preach to the team. We've seen this before and we've seen how this can go, even though it didn't go our way, it definitely had the potential to, you know, have a repeat in history and at least go back to the big 12 game. And I know it didn't work out that way, but that's how we kind of try to approach it. Yeah, no, and that's really what, what I, what I personally cared about it is how do you get that that focus, right. Be able to sort of set the tone for what you're going to do. You know, even if it doesn't work that way, you still, you guys put your foot down, you, you rip off a win streak, even if ultimately it doesn't get you to the, the big 12 championship game. But, you know, I, I wanted to take a, a step even further back from, from this year, man, because, you know, you coming out of high school are an all American. I, I, I mean, I'm sure you could have gone anywhere in the country, but why Texas? And I'm sure there's obvious reasons there. Did anyone have a chance to um, to get you to commit outside of Texas? Uh, I feel like TCU had a chance uh, for sure. I, I, uh, they were the first school to offer me. Uh, I had a pretty good relationship with all the coaches there. And um, I really thought I was going to go there. Uh, their scheme was like almost the exact scheme that I was running in high school. I loved it. I got it. 
it was something that was a natural field to, you know, go into a four down system like that. You know, they might run a little three down here and there, but for the most part, it felt like a pretty natural transition. I was, I was like, you know, going on visits and stuff. But just, just in the end, uh, I committed to uh, actually Charlie Strong. He got fired. And I was like, oh, yeah, I need to reconsider. So I started looking at TCU and OU in Texas. That's that's where the last three uh, took an official to TCU. Uh, I, I, love, I loved the visit. Uh, I loved everything. But uh, it kind of came down the stretch. And I was like, I also had a visit to OU. And I... Uh, Something just didn't feel right in my gut, and I ended up not even taking the official visit to OU. Uh, I kind of backed out of that, and uh, I kind of just committed to Coach Herman, you know, just left it up to that. Uh, it just kind of felt like the right thing to do in my gut is to go to Texas, something that, you know, in the back of my mind, I always wanted to do, but I always wanted to give myself, you know, options, uh, put myself in the best situation, you know, to be successful, uh, not only on the football field, but, you know, uh, my education as well. But it, it just came down. Uh, I'm from Texas. I'm from Temple, Texas, 45 minutes to an hour from Austin. Uh, that's some. I always wanted to be there in the back of my mind. And uh, that's why I made that decision. Uh, Mom can drive 45 minutes, uh, come see me whenever, come, come to all the home games. Uh, I felt like that was pretty important to me, as well as my brother. Uh, for them to come to the games to see me play, which uh, – it was a long four years and they, they got to do that. And I'm happy, I'm glad for it. And it definitely worked out in the end because I'm in the position I am today and uh, I wouldn't change it for anything. It definitely wasn't an easy road, you know, the four years at Texas, but uh, things that are worth it aren't always easy. So I, I got to ask, what is the, the Coach Herman pitch to get you to stay committed to Texas after Coach Strong leaves? What's he saying to get you to to forget the TCUs and the OUs of the world? No, honestly, he just came in uh, probably his first or second day of being hired saying, uh, we still want you. Uh, you're still committed. We're still like you to stay committed. And it pretty much, uh, they were on me every single day. Uh, him and uh, Coach Giles uh, on me every single day and uh, trying to build that relationship in that short before signing day. And it's, um, they really didn't have to do that much. I'm not, I really wasn't that type of kid that needed attention every day or wanted my phone to blow up or wanted, uh, you know, followers or anything like that. I'm, that's, that's not me. That's not my character. I cared about playing football at the right place, going to school at the right place, having that, you know, college experience uh, growing up. And I committed more to the school than I did, uh, you know, the coach Herman at the time, but uh, I feel very strongly about coach Herman. Uh, this, uh, we, we always haven't seen, I guess, eye to eye on things, but I will always respect, you know, for him giving me the opportunity to, to play for the school. And also uh, the things that he did behind the scenes that people don't know about. Um, and that, that's not exactly for me to speak on, but uh, it's definitely something that needs to be said. Uh, that man deserves a lot of respect. Uh, no matter how you feel about him on a, a coaching level or even a personal level, he's done a lot of things to help his players out. Yeah, I, I don't, th despite his tenure at Texas ending, I've never heard anything negative about Coach Herman, particularly as it yeah. pertains to helping his athletes. So I'm sure he's going to land on his feet. I, I don't actually know if he did take another job or not, but if he hasn't, he will never have a shortage of offers. Yeah. You know, I am... Um, I did want to talk a little bit about you playing defensive line because you know, I, from what I could gather, you know, you end up playing, you know, more three technique, you know, this year, a little less two gapping, but as time's gone on, man, it seems like you've gone from tackle out to end. You know, I, I don't know if any of the disagreements maybe you had with your coaches had to do with where you play on the line, but how did you feel about how you've tried different things and the schemes changed a little bit? I know you've gone, you know, to four I and maybe even in, been split out further at times but did you have a preference and you know has it changed over the years um I think as I like learned more about football more about schemes you know studying tape more uh, also my body changing as I've been in college I got a lot you know bigger uh, I put a lot of muscle on in that first year and I was probably 270 275 I came in around 
you know, 255, 260. And I always thought I was going to be a defensive end. Always thought I was going to be able to rush the passer at all times and do this and do that. And I kind of had a, you know, shock to my system where I was like, I was always stuck in the four eye. And uh, I, honestly, I didn't want to play that four eye. It's, it's pretty difficult to rush out over four eye. But uh, I embraced it. Uh, I tried my best to, you know, be successful at any position that they put me in. And I played a, I played a head up nose before, a shade, a two eye, a three technique, a four eye, a five. And I feel like that's something that's definitely helped me. Uh, you know, being a you know a prospect in the draft that I can play all these different you know techniques and shades and all that, and um, and um, I can say at the end of it, I might not have been happy at the time, you know, playing certain positions, but me being able to do all those things, uh, I'm definitely you know appreciated, and uh, I'm glad that I was able you know to work through those things and uh, I guess gain the ability slash knowledge to you know play all those different spots. Yeah, yeah, it makes you versatile. Um, so I, I got to ask, though, and I know that the answer is Aaron Donald, but who do you watch film on as you're, you were, you know, particularly trying to figure out these different, you know, uh, techniques? Anyone actually, in the NFL? Uh, yeah, actually, J.J. Watt's tape. Uh, I, I, watch it, I watch it a lot, and uh, you, I even can look at Charles's tape. Charles lines up at 2R, 3 technique, 5. The same with J.J. Watt. He was lined up in a three, a five. Lecture Cox, the things he does, uh, Akeem Hicks. Um, is just different people. Like, uh, no one really has a true, like, just one thing that they play. A lot of players in the league are versatile. They can play different shades, different techniques. And uh, I think that's pretty important. And being versatile and being able to rush on a tackle or a guard or even a center, uh, it may, I feel like it makes you more valuable. Uh, but at the same time, uh, just watching their tapes and see how they can transition between moving inside and out was pretty important. Uh, it was something early in my career that I really didn't understand. I really didn't get, but you know, the more tape I was watching, the more I understood the game. And uh, that's something as a young player uh, coming into college, you really, you really don't, watch tape you don't understand the need for it as much uh but when you get into college that's something you need to do and um those are the guys I mainly was watching you know the top interior rushers uh then JJ Watt his versatility you know moving inside and out even though you know that's a hall of fame player um just watching the best you know picking up little nuggets here and there yeah um but to your point they're, they're the top guys and they're versatile. They're not these one-dimensional guys. I think. I think that what makes them so great is that they can line up other places. They can use different, you know, techniques while playing different techniques. It's. Uh, I think that's just what it takes. But um, you know, man, as we, as we get close to wrapping up here, I, I wanted to point out that you were, I believe, second team academic all conference this year. So you're obviously yeah. someone that, that takes your education very important. And you said that that's one of the reasons why you wanted to go to Texas, but. Having a strong work ethic for school, I'm sure it translates to you having a strong work ethic in football or anything else you apply to. So I just wanted to give you a shout out for being a, obviously a very well-rounded person. But did you have any academic or non-football related um, aspirations or goals for you know some point maybe further down the line? Yeah, further down the line, uh, probably pursue something you know with my degree. Uh, I got my degree in corporate communications. Uh, I did a couple, you know, internships in the summer when we most had time to do stuff like that. But uh, anything in particular? No, not right now. You know, um, I'm definitely focused, you know, 100 percent on, you know, this football dream and um, uh, making sure I can play football for as long as I can. Uh, definitely got some things in the back of my mind uh, that I might want to accomplish down the line. But uh, just full steam ahead when it comes to this football stuff. And um, when it comes to academics, I just kind of felt like, how much do you care? Um, that's what it comes down to, because, you know, being a you know, division one athlete or even an athlete at all, it doesn't matter what division. Uh, your schedule's kind of tight sometimes. And when you got those, those projects you got to do, uh, the working around your schedule, you got a test you got to study for right, right after a game or right before a game. It's, uh, it's all about, you know, your effort, honestly, the, how much effort you put into it. And, uh, that's what comes down to football as well. Um, you know, effort exceeds talent at times. Yeah, 
yeah, you got to handle your business. And obviously you've been able to do it um, for, on more than one occasion. Cause I know that you've been on like the, the Dean's list and stuff before uh, this year, but man, I, I want to wrap things up on my rapid fire question segment called the gauntlet. So I hope you're ready. Got a couple quick ones for you. TQ what's most important having the number one offense or the number one defense. Having the number one defense. All right. Favorite football memory so far. Uh, Sugar Bowl 2018. All right. Or 20, actually 2019. 2018. Yeah, that's what I think it was. Um, what's most important? Is it the players or is it the scheme? I would say it's the players. Um, some players can make or break a scheme. Absolutely. Now, pregame, give me at least one song that's on the playlist. One song that's on the playlist. Um... Oh man, I gotta think about it. Uh, definitely Lil Wayne, uh, all time favorite. Um, trying to think, uh, probably, I can't even think of one song. Uh, it probably has to be, uh, oh man. I can't Are we going back to like, like old Lil Wayne, like the Carter yeah, Three? Yeah, Carter Three, Carter, uh, listening to the old school Wayne, uh, even, even some of the mixtapes. Sorry for the wait. Uh, Man, I, I'm, I'm a couple years older, so I'm 30, and that makes me feel so good to know that there's people younger than me that they'll listen to Lil Wayne. Sure, uh, throwback Wayne all the, all the way, but um, I probably would go to mixtape, sorry for the wait, too. Uh, that's something uh, I always listen to. This always in the, you know, the playlist, uh, going back, listening to Lil Wayne songs. Awesome. Well, man, last one. It's what I love to end on. Considering everything you've been able to push through and accomplish to get here today, what's the best piece of advice that you'd give to a young student athlete that wants to get to where you are? Um, you think uh, this is kind of going to be a long, you know, drawn out answer, but um, you think Take when you time. come to this situation, you know, being a highly recruited guy, which I, I kind of was, and you come into a situation think that it's going to be easy, it's going to be like high school, but you truly have to start over. Like you're a freshman in high school again, uh, you have to put in the work. You have to work twice as hard as everyone else, the upperclassmen, and you have to study game tape and learn as much as you can in those first two years, in my honest opinion. I think that's what separates a lot of guys. You have to come into the situation ready to learn, ready to accept that you may not be as good as you thought you were. And being comfortable enough to accept that and to learn and to, I think that's the most important thing for a student athlete. Man, I am so happy that that is your answer because as I'm going through my head of stuff that I wanted to ask you as we were wrapping up, I thought to myself, man, I really wish that I found a way to sneak in what his mindset was as a freshman at Texas, because you see guys that are high school All-American and five-star recruits that don't end up becoming anything, and you avoided that pitfall. So I wanted to ask you about your approach to make sure that you weren't one of those guys and you took all the, the, the hype that you got as an 18-year-old and you didn't let it get to your head. You were able to continue to grind it out, work on your craft, and be here today. So I, I, that your answer just like hit the nail right on the head for the one thing I thought I missed. Thankfully though, we, I guess we were on the same page. Yeah. Um, I, you want me to touch on that a little bit? As much as you want, this is your show now. Um, something that very, that kept me very grounded ever since I was a kid is my, my mother and my brother. Um, and I guess what kind of stopped me that it was, Probably uh, my sophomore year, we were winning a lot of games. And, of course, I was playing a lot, but I wasn't a starter. And it kind of it kind of ate me alive on the inside. It's something that I kind of struggle with every day, you know, not being the guy, um, not being the guy that I've seen in high school. And uh, it definitely took a look in the mirror that whole year about who I wanted to be as a player, what type of legacy that I wanted to, you know, leave. Um and I, it was it was a lot of nights that I was, you know, on the phone with my mom, my brother frustrated that I wasn't playing as good as I thought I should or I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that. And uh, it was a lot, a lot of self-reflection, a lot of like, what am I not doing? Um, a lot of going back and looking at my freshman year tape, my sophomore year tape, it was like, and just looking at it be like, I'm horrible. 
why am I doing this? Why am I doing that? And I feel like you have to be your worst critic. And not only do you have to be your worst critic, you can't make the same mistake twice. You can't be the same player you were the year before. And uh, that's definitely how I avoided that pitfall. Um, always getting better week to week, year to year, wherever it took. Uh, I think that's the most important, no matter what type of player you think you are, there's always room for improvement. There's always room to get better. So you kind of had that bottom out moment where you're just like, if I don't change something, th this is going to be gone. I I'm not, I, I would have missed my opportunity to be who I want to be. Yeah. And uh, that's probably was like one of my worst fears, you know, not panning out to what I wanted to be, not, you know, I don't know, not uh, accomplishing what, you know, everyone's goal is to, you know, make it to the NFL. But uh, I felt like it was a realistic goal for myself. And um, I wanted to do everything that I could to make that, you know, goal come true. And at the same time, uh, you know, we weren't always winning the games you should win. And I felt like if I up my play, I give my team a better chance as well. And uh, I, I just wanted to win. Uh, I felt like winning was everything at that point in time. And uh, with winning comes, you know, opportunities. And uh, I just tried to do everything, uh, you know, to improve myself as a player, as a leader, as a good teammate. And I felt like everything kind of worked out when it came to that. I know we came up short sometimes, but uh, I definitely, uh, looking back on it, if I had to do it all again, I would do it again. Uh, none of it was easy, but all it, it was all worth it. Yeah, and I think instead of like goals, uh, the way to look at it is potential. Like you legitimately had the potential at 18 to play in the NFL. So the question is, will you live up to your potential? And and instead of thinking like, oh, I'm going to miss my goal, it's like I'm not going to develop to the person that I can be. And I know that I can be this person. And you decided, you know, two years in to make that change in you know, the tape says the rest, what you did on the field. And I'm sure your, your coaches, your teammates, they, everyone can attest to, you know, the, the time and effort you've put in. And at the end of the day, that's what matters. People are going to grade you on your character, you know, outside of football, just in life, you know, your character and what you do, your integrity, that's what matters. So, I, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious then that you're well on your way. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Well, TQ, man, thank you so much for breaking it down, uh, particularly this last part. The, the realest part came at the very end. So, uh, man, I wish you all the best, and I, I can't wait to see what the future holds. I uh, really appreciate you for having me. Thank you.